Hi, this is Angela G. from No Longer Lukewarm for Red Hot Christians and Wannabes. These videos are for those of you who like to listen while you're maybe doing something else. For those of you who like to read my blogs, you can find that link in the description box below. So this one is called, Instead of Fear, Choose Faith in God's Promises. Fear is natural, and in many cases, it's a good thing. As children, we were taught to fear hot stoves in the middle of the street for our own good. While fear can be a motivating factor to be careful and wise in our dealings, it can also cause torment if we allow it to dwell. Scientist Carl Albright, Ph.D., tells us that there are five basic fears from which all others emanate. These are the universal to all humans, and they go hand in hand with our basic needs. But while our flesh might be prone to react to certain information with distress, the Bible tells us over a hundred times not to fear. Instead, God assures us that he will take care of us, be with us, and guide us if we will just live in right relationship with him. Instead of fear, we can choose faith in God's promises instead. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Here are the five kinds of fears and God's promises that speak to them. Keep this list handy and pray these scriptures in belief. Number one. Fear of physical damage or pain. Pain by definition hurts. It's an unpleasant sensation that lets us know that something is wrong so that we can fix it before more damage is done. We all want to be healthy and whole. We want all of our physical needs met like food, water, shelter, and sleep. But when one or more of those needs is threatened, whether real or imagined, this can cause fear. Fear of not having enough. God knows we have physical needs. He didn't drag the people of Israel out of Egypt to let them starve in the desert. He supplied them with food from the sky and water from a rock. His presence went with them to guide them on their journey. He made a way when there was no way for them, and he hasn't changed in his ability or willingness to take care of his people. Psalm 37:25 says, I have been young and am now old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. When we look at our lives, we can see that he has always provided for us in the past. We can trust the same from him in the future. Matthew 6, verses 31 to 33 Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew 7, verses 9 to 11. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good thanks to those who ask him? Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but, by every, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Philippians 4.19 And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Fear of sickness or fatigue Being a child of God doesn't mean that we never get sick. Sometimes we will be kept from illness, but other times God will use it for his own purposes. Romans 8.28 tells us, And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Maybe illness is what is necessary to get us into the presence of those who need to be told about salvation. Maybe going through pain is how we will be humbled enough to understand and comfort others in their trials. Or maybe he will heal us for his glory. In any case, whether he keeps us from it or is with us through it, no pain is wasted with God. Psalm 91, verses 10 through 12. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall keep, give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they should bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. James 5, verses 14 to 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Isaiah forty twenty nine. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Isaiah forty thirty one. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Number two, fear of death, fear of physical death. Life is precious. It's a basic instinct of all of us to act in our own best interest to preserve ourselves and the lives of others. This fear keeps us from risky behavior, but it can also cause terrible stress and strain when we feel that our physical safety is threatened. Of course, trusting in God doesn't mean that we will never die. Job 13:15 says, Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. It just means that God will not allow us to be taken out before he chooses the time for us to go. Men and even the devil have no power over us, while God still has a purpose for us on earth. Psalm 56, 11, In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Psalm 511. But let all those who rejoice put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Fear of losing salvation. As Christians, we know death is not the end. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. When the devil can't make us fear losing this life, he can try to make us fear going into the next. The fear of eternal death or losing our salvation is a favorite ploy of the enemy to cause mistrust in God. Yes, we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and do our best to listen to God and obey Him. But the idea that we are on the edge of hell with every thought or action is a lie from the pit. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He promises to keep us if we will but hope to the end in Him. Jude 24 Not to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Philippians 1.6 being confident in this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ. 1 John 1, 9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 14, 3 And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am you may also be. John ten twenty eight, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Psalm 121, 7-8 The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. 1 Peter 1, 4 To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 John 2, 25 And this is the promise he has promised us, eternal life. Number 3. Fear of losing control Feeling helpless in any given situation can lead to fear. We don't want to lose our freedom, whether it's a physical freedom to move around or a mental freedom to think and speak the way we see fit. We want the power to choose to act in ways that make a meaningful difference in our situations. In addition, having choices to make with unknown outcomes can bring fear and even panic into our hearts if we wallow in the what-ifs instead of bringing our troubles to God and asking for Him to guide us. The key here is to understand who is in charge of our lives. Either we are or God is. There can only be one captain of our ship. As Christians, we are simply not our own. We have been bought with a price and God now calls the shots. We can have confidence that even when it feels like things are spiraling out of control, nothing surprises God. He hears us when we call. He guides us and he will work on our behalf if we will but trust in him. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God, resi resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Psalm 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of troubles. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Psalm 1, 3, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Number 4. Fear of Separation We all want to be loved and accepted. Fear comes when we consider the possibility that we will be rejected, unwanted, abandoned, or separated from those we love. We need connections to family and intimacy and love and friendship. One of the greatest fears that the devil cries, tries to create in Christians is the fear that God will abandon us, that we will be left to face this life alone. But the devil is a liar. God will be with us and will even watch over our families for us. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41:13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Deuteronomy 31, 8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Deuteronomy 4.29 But from there you will seek the Lord God, and you will find him if you seek him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Psalm 23.4 Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. Isaiah 49.25 even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with them who contends with you, and I will save your children. Number five, fear of disapproval. Our identity as a person matters. We all want to be thought of as lovable, capable, and worthy. When faced with humiliation and shame, our sense of self is threatened. For Christians, we want to feel that we matter to God's work and to God himself. God goes to great lengths in his word to assure us that he loves us and he values us as his precious children, even if and when other people turn their backs on us. God never will. Matthew 10, 30, 31. Do not fear, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Psalm 9, verses 9 to 10, And the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Fear is the opposite of faith. 1 John 4, 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. God is a good father who watches out for his children and wants what is best for us in every situation, even if we don't understand at the time. Someone once counted 3,573 of God's promises in the Bible for his children. And unlike people, when God says something, he means it. Numbers 23:19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Over and over, the Bible tells us not to fear. God is with us and for us, and he is always in control. That doesn't mean that as Christians we won't experience pain and even death, at least the physical kind. But it does mean that God sees us and will answer when we call. In many cases, God has and will deliver us from troubles. We are not our own, and we all have jobs to do for the kingdom. While he still has a use for us, he will keep us alive and safe. But even if he doesn't, he will be with us to comfort us the whole time, and he will use every bit of pain and discomfort for our good and his glory. The remedy for fear is understanding the trusting the promises of God. God will take care of us, comfort us, keep us, fight for us, love us, and be with us, no matter what else happens to us in this life. We can trust in God and his promises and choose faith instead of fear.